Hey everyone, welcome to Advanced Scratch. Today we're going to be going over lesson three. Here is an overview for today's class. First, we're going to learn about costumes and apply that to our project of Hangman. And then we're going to learn about custom blocks and also apply that to Hangman. So there's no review today. Let's get right into costumes. Before we learn more about costumes and start making costumes, let's look at it from the lens of Hangman specifically. So in a game of Hangman, every time you guess a wrong letter, what happens? Pause the video and try and just say out loud to the screen what happens when you guess a wrong letter. Okay, assuming you answered that question, the answer is that a limb is added to the Hangman. I think this is kind of self-explanatory. As you can see in this image down here, every time you guess a wrong letter, a limb is added. So when you start off the game, it, the Hangman looks like this. And then when you guess one wrong letter, a head is added. When you guess another wrong letter, the body is added. When you guess another wrong letter, the left hand is added. When you guess another one, the right hand, then the left leg, and then the right leg. And when you get to this point, you've lost the game. You've used all your guesses, right? So that is how the game of Hangman works and how we punish them for guessing a wrong letter. So we want to draw these costumes in Scratch. We want to draw each of these different uh, hangmans in our own scratch project under the same sprite. We want to have the hangman where there's no body, the hangman where we start drawing the head, the hangman where we draw the body as well, the hangman where we draw the left hand. So we want to have each of these in our project. So to do this, we're going to achieve, we're going to achieve this by drawing costumes. Here's how you draw a costume in scratch. You go to the sprite you want to draw under. And then in the top left of Scratch, there is this little area. You can select costumes. And then once you get to this interface, you can hover over this purple button in the bottom left of the screen. Once you hover over that button, you should see the paint tool and you can click on that. And then finally, you will have a canvas to draw the whatever you want to draw. And you can use the drawing tools to do that. So let me just show you guys what this looks like. So we have our our game of hangman over here and we have my sprite this is the main sprite i'm doing all my code under i'm going to go under costumes and as you can see i've already drawn all the costumes but if i wanted to draw another costume i'd hover over this and i would click paint and costume is added but as you can see i've drawn each costume for each different guess so we have when the player has guessed no letters wrong after one letter they get ahead after one letter they get the body, after another letter they get the left hand, another letter they get the right hand, after another letter they get this hand, the, this leg, and after another letter they get this leg. So you want to have a total of seven costumes. And you don't have to draw it exactly like this, you can use different colors, draw it however you want. Just pause the video and make sure to draw all of those costumes under the same sprite in Scratch, okay? It has to be under the same sprite and it has to be different costumes. So pause the video and take how, however t how much time you need to do that and then we'll resume the video. Okay, assuming that you paused the video and were able to work on that, uh, hopefully you guys are able to draw all the costumes, but let's move on to the code portion. So just a quick note for code, uh, when we have the flag is clicked block afterwards, we want to, under the sprite, set it to go to whatever x and y coordinate you want. Uh, if, if you want it to just be 0, 0, you don't have to do this part. But for my project, I wanted the hangman to be slightly more to the left. So I said go to 0, comma, negative 50 so that it was a little bit more to the left side of the screen. It, that's just personal preference, but if you guys want to do that, take a second to pause the video and do that right now. So that was costumes. Good job, guys. Let's move on to the more harder part of this lesson, which is custom blocks. First, let's learn about what is a custom block and why we use it. A custom block is basically a special blo block you can create. So you guys see how in Scratch there are all these different blocks. There's like a say block, a set size block, all these just random blocks. There's like a lot of them, right? You get to make your own blocks in Scratch. If you go to the my block section, you can make your own custom block. And it prevents us from having to write the same code over and over again. And it can also help us organize our code. So an example of this in real life is when you're packing your bag to go to school in the morning. 
when you're packing your bag, you don't think, oh, I'm going to pack my math notebook and then my reading notebook and then my favorite mechanical pencil and then my highlighters and then my uh, pens and then my markers and then my water bottle and then my lunch. No, you don't think of every single thing you're going to pack. You kind of just pack your bag, right? You say, okay, I'm going to go pack up my bag and you just put everything in your bag and then just take the bag with you, right? You don't put, you don't think about every single specific step you have to do to pack your bag. You done it so many times and you've do, you do it so many times you do it every day before you go to school right you have started to just pack your bag you don't think about the specific things you're actually doing and it's kind of the same way with the custom block you're able to repeat actions over and over again and instead of having to write the code every time you can just use the custom block to make a custom block you want to go under the make uh, go under the my block section and choose the make a block option up here and then create your block using the tools, which are inputs and labels, which we will go over right now. So when you click this button over here, which is make a block, it brings up this interface. And there is usually a option in the middle here, but we've, uh, we've covered it up for the sake of this lesson because it's not really needed for a final project. So you guys can probably see it on your own screen. It says like Boolean. Don't worry about it. We don't need to learn about that right now. All we need to know are the add an input block over here or the add an input option and the add a label option. So you can add um, a number or text input, which is a blank space where uh, you can put in values that the block will use. For example, let's say that we're making a block which draws a shape. Maybe in that input area, you want to have them put in how many sides the shape has. And then the second option you can add is you can add a label, which is just a piece of text that describes what the blocker input does. So let's look at an example. Can anyone guess what this custom block does? As you can see, it has two labels over here. It says draw a shape with, and then it has an input, um, which, is, which says number or text, and then you have sides. Okay. Hopefully you guys are able to take a guess, but this this block basically draws a shape with x sides, x being the number you put into this input here. Let's talk about defining a custom block. When you create a custom block, Scratch will auto automatically make this define block over here. And this is where you write the code for the custom block that you want to repeat. And every time you use the custom block, it will use it will execute all the code from the define block. So let's look at this example program over here, which should hopefully help make things a bit clearer. We have a, a sprite and we have a program which says with one flag is clicked, count from one to 10. But this is a custom block, right? We made this. We, as you can see over here, it says define count from one to 10. And then underneath we have some code. We say set counter to one and then repeat X. And X is the input that we put in, right? And we say say counter for two seconds, change, change counter by one. So this is basically just counting up from uh, one to whatever number you put in. So here we said count from one to 10. If we put in 15, it's gonna count from one to 15 instead. If we put in 20, it's gonna count from one to 20. And we can do this how many ever times we want. We could, we could use this custom block as many times as we want. But the point is that when you use the custom block, it's basically referring to the code over here and executing it. So let's make our own custom blocks for Hangman. We're going to make two custom blocks for Hangman. We're going to create asterisk list of, list of length x. And basically this is like we need some sort of way to display the number of letters to the player. And we can do this by creating a list of asterisks. As you can see here, there are some blanks, right? In a game of Hangman, you put in blanks and they have to guess each letter. Uh, we're going to use asterisks instead of blanks because that's just easier. An asterisk, if you guys don't know, it is basically just this symbol over here. So that is the first custom block we have to make. And then the second custom block we have to make is add co correct letter to word being guessed. So as you guys might remember, word being guessed was a list we made, which has the, the players, all the players guesses basically. When the player guesses a letter and they are correct, we want to show them that the we want to show them the letter so that they know where it is. 
this block will figure out where the letter is meant to go and place it there in the word of blanks. So as we can see here, for example, if the player originally started the, off the game with zero, all the blanks, obviously, then they guess the letter E, then the E would go in the first and the last blank, right? And that would help the player figure out, okay, maybe it's this word or maybe it's that word. So that's what this custom block is essentially doing. Let's start off with creating asterisk list of length X. So first I want you guys to think about, will there be any inputs we need to include? Thinking about that, try to pause the video and make the block on your own, and then we will reveal the answer. And what I mean by this is just go to scratch and create the block and using our knowledge about inputs and labels, make the block. You don't have to define the block, you just have to make the block. So pause the video and take a crack at it. Okay, assuming you guys were able to pause the video and try it out, this is how, well, this is one way you could have created the block. So you say create asterisk list of length. So that's all a label. And then you just have an input at the end where you say X. Now that we've created this block, a defined block for it should pop up automatically. Remember, and do you guys remember the list that we created for showing the player the word? It was called word being guessed, right? We want to fill this list with asterisks. This list has to be of length X. So try to define this custom block on your own and then we will reveal the answer. And a hint is you have to add an asterisk to the list X times. Okay, let's look at the answer. To make this block, you have to say, first of all, you have to start off with the define block, define, cr uh, define create asterisk list of link X. And then you want to delete all of word being guessed, which is the list with the player's guess. And you want to have a repeat loop where you repeat X times. You want to add an asterisk to word being guessed that many times. So if the player, if it's a five letter word, we want to have five asterisks, which are five blanks basically, right? Now let's work on the next block, which is add correct letter to word being guessed. Will there be any inputs we need to include here, guys? Try to pause the video, think about that, and then make the block on your own, and then we will reveal the answer. Okay, hopefully you guys are able to think about that. The answer is you want to have a label which says add correct letter, and then you have, a, you have an input, just call it letter or whatever you want to call it, and then add another label to word being guessed. So add correct letter to word being guessed. Now that you guys were able to make that block, let's think about how we want to define it. So we will use this block when the user guesses a letter correctly. However, how do we figure out which letter the player guessed correctly? And more importantly, how do we know which asterisk to replace with the letter? If we have a game of Hangman where we have uh, like four blanks like this, then in and it's let's say the word is uh, or let's say three blanks and the word is dog if the player guesses the letter o then yeah we know it's a correct letter right but how would we figure out which where to which blank to replace because if the word is dog and they guess o we don't replace this blank right nor do we replace oops nor do we replace this blank we actually have to replace the middle blank right guys that's what we have to replace. So how do we figure that out? Do you guys to pause the video, try to work on this, try to define this custom block, and a hint is you'll need to create some sort of counter variable to check each letter of the guess. Okay, hopefully you guys paused the video and tried it out, but let me go over the answer now. So you want to do this by setting a low you want to make a variable called a whatever you want just i called it local counter set it to one and then repeat length of word so remember word is the actual word is the actual word it's the correct word that we're the, the player is trying to guess right and each time we repeat we want to say if letter let local counter of word this basically is checking a specific letter of the word so if local counter is one it's going to check the first letter of word if local counter is two, it's going to check the second letter of the word. So it's just checking if the local counter of the word is equal to letter, then we're going to replace item local counter of word being guessed with letter. So basically what this means 
is let's say that we have the word and let's say that we have all the blanks. We're basically checking if the blank, or sorry, we're checking if the corresponding letter in the word matches up with the blank. And if it is, then we'll replace the blank with that letter. And we just do this and we change local counter by one. So every time we're gonna go up and we're going to uh, go through each letter in the word. So let's do some review. Uh, th that was a little bit tough, so hopefully you guys are able to follow along and get those custom blocks in your program. First of all, first question, what is the purpose of a custom block? And you can pause the video and try to answer this on your own. Okay, the answer to this is that a custom block is meant to perform a repeated action in your code. Second question, how do you make a custom block? You can pause the video and try to answer this as well. The answer is you go to my blocks and click make a block. Great. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next lesson. Bye guys.